this this is how I know it. Let me get the recording started. Uh, <laughs> oh, like, my bad. Okay, I, sh I should have stopped go. talking. That's okay. You're um, good. <laughs> th this is how I always know that this, you know, something is really, really meant for his people. Uh, um, whoever the deliverer is, often they will get attacked, you know. Like last night, I only got probably like at most like three hours of sleep, you know, because I've been constantly getting up and going, you know, or, a whole bunch of stuff, right? But I thank God because, you know, it's not about me, right? It's about what he plans on delivering through me this morning, okay? And what anybody here is going to be saying today, you know, everything that um, anyone brings adds something to the pot, right? We love our food. We love different seasonings and all that stuff, right? Thanksgiving is coming soon. And I can't wait, right? Everything adds to his flavor, right, of his work. This morning, I believe um, this, this, I, I think this is going to really, really tie in, right, to what everyone has been kind of speaking about um, um, over time, okay, especially these past few weeks, right? Um, God wants us to look at Noah, okay? He wants us to look at Noah, uh, and as I look back on different things that I shared, um, I've noticed that he has kept me in a book of Genesis for a long time. Even when I was speaking about the garment and 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 all of these other things, right? He's kept me in the beginning, right? What he's been telling me was to go back to the foundation, right? Go back to the foundation of my word. There's so many different things in there that I want you to pull out, that I will pull out. OK. And he brought me to the book of Noah. Right. And I asked God, why do you want me to talk about Noah? Right. What he has shared. Right. In many different ways is that Noah provides one of his blueprints for building. OK. And I said, OK, I don't know what you know, what you're going to bring forth, but I'm going to be obedient and do what you tell me to do, right? And he he's privileged me of, um, to, to share like different aspects of this book in Genesis, okay? Um, so this whole story starts in Genesis chapter five, right? Near the end of Genesis chapter five, right? I wanna start there, right? But Genesis chapter five talks about really the lineage before Noah comes on the scene, right? Genesis chapter five talks about Adam to Noah, Adam to Noah. And that's important because remember before, you know, Adam came on the scene, we had the whole creation story, right? He's bringing us back to the foundation, right? He created the heavens and the earth. He created the creatures on the land, in the water. He created the sun, the moon, the stars, okay? The water, between the waters, if, 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 if you, and I'm not even gonna go there, right? Not, not today, because even that is like a big story in itself, right? That, and I learned over like my time of really delving into Genesis that there's actually a body of believers that devote their time to biblical cos, cosmology or cos, something, right? Having to do with all of these things, right? God's creation come together, right? In this beautiful, beautiful um, um, stage, right? Which really it serves as our incubator, right? Think of it as your incubator <laughs> in a sense, right? He created the heavens and the earth for us, right? To dwell, to, to, to um, just take satisfaction from the land, right? And to multiply on the land, okay? So back to Noah. We see in... Um, Know which um, chapter five, verse 28, right? It talks about Lamech, right? Which is Noah's dad, okay? And when I always look back at, you know, at this part of scripture, right? I'll always, I'm always tickled because these men were like over a hundred years old having babies. Lamech was about 182 years old when he had Noah. Can you imagine that? He was 182 years old when he had Noah. 
they they probably look better than us. <laughs> you know, he probably looked 20 years old at 182, right? Because these people would live to like over 200 years old. Okay. Um, it said it, it it said in this part right, of scripture that um Lamech, when he died, he was at the age of 777 years old when he died. Okay. And I might come back to this because Lamech is just as important to the story, right, than any other of these things, right? Because through him was birthed another season in, you know, our chapter of life. You might as well wave to Lamech and Noah and say, hey, granddad, <laughs> you know, because we came out of this story, okay? So we see here that um, Lamech gave, you know, he, he out of Lamech came Noah, right? And Noah's name, right, means he will comfort us in the labor and painful toil of our hands caused by the ground, the Lord cursed, all right? And to get a bigger, a better context of that, right, we have to go back to the beginning when man fell, okay? As soon as man fell, God cursed the land, right? The land was cursed because of what happened with Adam and Eve when they were deceived by the enemy, right? The snake, the devil. Um, so that's that's pretty much the background. But Noah was brought on the scene as sort of like a redemption for us, right? So the, all of this is like a typing shadow of what will come way down the line with Jesus, right? But this is one of like the first depictions, right? And illustrations of God's love for us. God's love for us. So Noah had three sons. He had Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? And, and, and Pastor Don, if I'm saying anybody's name wrong, please hold me accountable, all right? Just, you can yell out, Sheldon, come on, man. You, you should know better. <laughs> But um, Gen in Genesis chapter 6, this is when it gets interesting, right? We see here in Genesis 6, 1 through 8, we start to see like a, an illustration of the amount of corruption. You say, I, I, I'm, <laughs> yeah, 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 we all, we all do, we all do. We, we start to see the amount of corruption and craziness that's going on on earth. So um, I'm going to read that, right? So Genesis chapter six, and I'll, I'll start from verse one. When man began to increase in number on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them they chose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with man forever, for he is mortal. His days will be 120 years. So God is saying, well, let, 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 let me continue to read here. Verse four, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward. When the sons of God went to the daughters of men and had children by them, they were the heroes of old, men of renown. The law saw how great man's wickedness on earth had become and that, and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. Can you imagine that? Every second, every minute, their thoughts were of evil, violence, corruption. Verse six, the Lord was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I have created from the face of the earth, men and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air, for I am grieved that I have made them. Verse eight, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. But no one found favor in the eyes of the Lord. The, let, let me go back to the previous verses. So 
over time, the Lord witnessed, right? Um, men multiplying over the earth, okay? He also witnessed his creation becoming defiled, okay? So oftentimes people, they gloss over um, chapter six, verse, verse, um, verses one through three, right? So when it says the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful, right? What this is saying, right? The sons of God were angels, right? We're talking about that that the fallen angels at this point, right? There's a depiction that there's a distinction here, right? The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and they married any of them that choose. Then the Lord said, my spirit will not contend with man forever. He is mortal. His days will be 120 years, right? So verse four, the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of men, okay? So th th there's a distinction between these, right? So we have the fallen angels, right? Who defiled God's creation, they connected with each other and they created these um, abnormal beings, okay? Um, which grieved God's heart because this is an example of the enemy, okay? Um, pretty much defiling and tampering with God's creation because one, he hates you. He hates God's creation. He hates, he, he's envious of you, okay? So in his eyes, he wants to, 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 to destroy everything and also create his own thing, okay? Because he wants to be just like God. He wants to be God himself, right? So this is him tampering with God's creation. And God decides to wipe everything off, right? Wipe the slate clean. But he saw Noah, okay? So I just want to give like a, a, a shine some light on who Noah is, right? Right? And so we go to verse nine. It says, this is the account of Noah. And by the way, um, Jacinta, I'm reading from the NIV version, okay? My bad. I should have said that before. So verse nine, this is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God, right? Verse 10, Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, right? So I want to stop there for a moment. So you have all of this corruption going on, okay? You have all this, this, uh, these defiling things going on, right? You have these, these beings that are on the planet, right? Uh, this, this abnormal sort of, you know, things going on on the planet. And it, it also gives an illustration of this um, in verse 12, right? I'll, I'll get that in a minute. But God, at this point, he sees what the enemy has done on the earth. And he said, I'm going to just wipe it clean, right? And he sees Noah, and Noah has favor with God. So what the Lord is saying is now, I'm taking a remnant, okay? Everything else, I'm going to wipe away. <laughs> but this person that I favor, I'm going to um, preserve his life. This person is set apart. This person is walking with me. And because this person has favor in my sight, I will also favor his children and his generations. Okay? So I want you to hold on to that. So Noah's life is going to be spared. And we'll see that in a moment. Okay? So verses 11 through... 13 talks about the amount of filth, the corruption, the violence that's going on, on on earth. Now think about the worst case scenarios on earth right now, right? And and honestly, I'm going to be honest, we're at the brink of war <laughs> right now. Like, uh, like there's so many different places around the, uh, around the world that are experiencing war and pressure of war. We have Israel and Gaza. We have Russia, Ukraine. We have things going on in Africa, right? Africa, France, and all these different places. Things are happening at a rapid speed. But let me tell you something. This earth here in Genesis is a different earth. <laughs> these people thought about evil 
24 seven, every second of the day that thought about evil, right? And I can, can, can you imagine what Noah experienced just, just stepping outside, seeing these like tall <laughs> things running around, seeing people chasing each other, probably throwing daggers and all sorts of stuff at each other, right? The sounds, the, the, the sights and all of these things that were happening. But yet Noah was set apart, right? From among these people, okay? Now I want to I'm gonna stick a pin in this because at this point, um God already establishes that he's gonna wipe the face of the earth, right? With the flood. He already he already establishes this in chapter six, right? I want to stick a pin in that for a moment. At this point of this story, okay, God is preparing us to look at four things, all right? These are the four things. These are the four key things that he wants us to be prepared for, okay? The process of building, that's one. The process of waiting, that's two. The process of testing, that's three in the process of blessings, that's for process of building, process of waiting, process of testing, process of blessings, okay? Now let's skip ahead to, um, let me see, Genesis chapter six, verse 14, okay? This is after, um, God already establishes that he's he's going to start over, okay? And at this point, God is instructing Noah to build something. He's instructing him to build an ark, and he's telling him how to build an ark, all right? So verse 14, chapter 6, so make yourself an ark of cypress wood, make rooms in it, and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long, 75 um, feet wide, and 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark to within 18 inches of the top. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heaven in it everything on earth will perish but i will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you okay so this this part of this part of scripture right talks about the process okay that the lord wanted him to take to build this structure okay and as you can tell, this is a big structure. This is a big structure. You're talking about something that's 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. I want you to think about that for a moment. Imagine how much time, how much material that it would take to build this structure. Okay. And God asked him to build it. Now, I was looking around to see if there was any evidence of God asking him to, you know, get helpers to build this ark, but he asked him to build it. This is all him. This was all him. And just take for a moment, right? Just, just sit back for a moment and think about what structure is God asking you to build? How wide, how long, how deep is he asking you to build this structure? Did he give you specific measurements on how to build this structure? Right? Now, I ask myself too, because I, I ask a lot of questions. 
I asked, like, did he give a specific time frame for him to build all of the stuff? Well, we we don't really have any evidence to tell, like, how long it took. But I know one thing. He told him to build it. And he told him what material to use. And he gave him measurements for that structure. Okay? And I, I want to skip down a little bit. Verse 19, right? I'm going to be, read from verse 19 to 22. Verse 19, you ought to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you and be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. But look this, look at this, verse 22. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. So the Lord told him the material. He told him the measurements. He told him to, the, the, the people, the things, right? Because it wasn't just animals. It was his family, his three sons and their wives, right? And his wife. And verse 22 says, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. So I, I want to stop there for a moment, right? Remember, we're still in the building. We're still in the building section of this, okay? So one of the things that stood out to me about Noah, right? At, at this, this man, right? That, that God had favor with, right? This man that was set apart. Not one time did I see Noah give God any back talk. No rebuttals. No questions at all. I'm sorry, for some reason I was muted. Um, at no point did I hear anything from Noah. There's no, there's no dialogue from Noah about Lord, but but what if there was nothing there? I had a lot of questions about this because according to what I've seen in other parts of scripture, we have people who are asking God questions, giving rebuttals, right? Giving doubt, giving fear, give, giving all of these worries and things, right? And if you ask me, their hearts weren't really pure, right? Just since you 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 shared something a while back, you talked about a pure heart, and this just came to me. A pure heart is is unmixed with fear, doubt, and worry. I saw I, he he picked Michael Jordan for 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 this for this whole thing. At, at this point, like he looks like the perfect man to me. He was the right man to build this structure. Okay. Second stage, the process of waiting. The process of waiting. Now, there's this there's, there's a there's a misconception here when, when, when we talk about building, right? Oftentimes we think that we have to wait a, a, a long time, right? We have to go through this long process of um declarations and um, a process of confirmations and process of signs and all these things before we just start building, right? The misconception, the misconception is that waiting comes before building. There is some waiting, but, th but there's, there's not really a substantial amount of waiting that has to take place. All you need to know is that God told you to do something and I'm going to do it. He's gonna give them give me the material. He's gonna give me um the, the measurements, whatever structure you're building. Okay. Hey, if if you've been building a family, you don't need that much material, right? <laughs> you just have to just do it and your family comes, right? Not to get crass. I'm sorry, I apologize. It's too early for that. Right? 
but there's a waiting after the structure is built, right? So so let's let's go to chapter seven, Genesis chapter Genesis chapter seven, and I'm going to delve into verses eleven through fourteen. Okay, now th th there's a lot of stuff around this, right? But I'm just taking out the morsels, okay, for the sake of time. So eleven. Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, I'm going to read through 14. Um, in the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day, all the springs of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were open, and the rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. On that very day, Noah and his son Shem, Ham, and Japheth together with his wife and the wives of his three sons entered the ark. They had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kind, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Okay? So at this point, the structure is built. All right. And the waters are starting to gather. Okay. And at this point, all of these people are going into the structure. All of these people are going into the structure. Right. So here's the thing. This is one of like the most important seasons of this whole thing, right? The waiting period. Because this is where the water starts to gather around your structure, okay? This is when you start to really, really prepare to see if your structure is able to withstand what's going to come after it. Oftentimes, we think that just building is it. I built it. All right, I'm going to walk away, <laughs> you know? But what's a structure or what's a building if it's not going to be used? Think about that. I built this structure, okay? The structure is meant to do something. I built the structure so that it can produce fruit, right? This ship, this ark was meant to float. This ark was meant to hold future. Well, well I'm not going to, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping ahead too much, right? This ark was meant to hold, right? Noah's family, livestock, and food to sustain them throughout this whole time, right? Let me go back to the waiting now, okay? Think about this. So not only were the waters being gathered, but people were going in, okay? And this is where time is important because did the people go in when it was dry outside? People weren't going in when it was dry outside. Right? That's another misconception. Like oftentimes you see like cartoons with Noah's Ark and people are just going in and there's sun outside. It said water was coming down, right? Water is just starting to gather. Okay. This is when things start to get interesting. All right. Now, the process of testing. The process of testing. So I want to skip ahead to chapter seven, all right? And I'm going to go to verse, verse 17. I want to read this 17 through 19, all right? Verse 17, for 40 days, the flood kept coming on the earth. And as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth, and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were 
covered. Now we have the meat in between the sandwich. <laughs> we have the process of a process of waiting, and now we're on to the process of testing. Right. Waiting is just the preparation. Okay. Waiting is just the preparation. And testing is when the integrity of the structure that you built is able to float. This is when we this is this is when we see whether what you built is able to float. If you didn't take heed and follow the instructions in the first process, which is the process of building. If you didn't do verse 22, which says, go on back to verse 22, Noah did everything just as God commanded him. If you cut some corners, those holes are gonna be exposed in part three, testing. Let that sink in for a moment. After you've waited all of this time, think about this. Floodwaters didn't just come out of nowhere. It took time for those floodwaters to come, right? And that water to come down. If you cut corners, if you cut all those corners in, in, in that first one, after all this time of waiting, when a testing comes, your ship is gonna go down with all those people, your family, your life, the, the livestock, the, the birds, all of these different things, your provisions will go down in the process. All that food that the Lord has commanded you to bring on board to sustain you for this trip, okay, to your promised land. But thank God that ark was lifted high and it was able to float. You see, your structure has to go through a rites of passage. I want to step away from Noah for, for a moment. Whatever structure you're building, right? It could be business, it could be family, it could be ministry. I don't care what structure you, or whatever the Lord is told to build. It has to go through a waiting period where the waters are gathering around it, okay? Has to go through a testing period. If you don't pass the test, you, you got to go right back to one. If you're able to. At this point, Noah wasn't, he, he wasn't in a, in, in, in a position where if something failed, he could go back and rebuild the ark. The ship already left, <laughs> you know? The waters are already here. When, when I heard this for the first time, right? When, when, when this came to me, I said, I said, man, if I don't, if, if I don't get my life right, if I don't get the, the, you know, my facts in order, my ship can sink. The structure that I'm building can sink. All right. Um, I wanted to talk about, I, I wanted to talk about real quick. Um, there was a specific thing, right? Um, that connects the season of testing and the season of blessings. It, 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 it it's it's very very it's very funny to me that how God uses things we see in chapter 8 verse 6 I want to read 
uh, from verse 6 to 12. So Genesis chapter 8. Um, yeah, I'm, I am want to read from verse 6 to 12. All right. And this is going to border, right, between the process of testing and the process of blessings. Okay. So verse 6, after 40 days, Noah opened the window he had made in the ark. And he and sent out a raven and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove to see if the water had received had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove couldn't um, could find no place to set his feet because there was um, water over all the surface of the earth. So he returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. Verse 10, he waited seven more days and again sent out the dove from the ark. 11, when a dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded from the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. So Noah opened this window that God instructed him to build, right? In section one of building. <laughs> it's in section one of building. He opened that window. And first he let a raven, a raven out. Okay. The kind of scout. Now, I asked God again, because I asked a lot of questions. Lord, why did you use a raven? Why did you use a dove? Right? Why, why, why these creatures? And why is it important to us? Right. You said, I'm glad that you asked. Uh, ravens, if, if you look, if if you look throughout scripture, right, God using he uses ravens in different capacities, right? And um, I think I shared before in a, in a, in another talk, I was talking about um I think Elijah was talking about, right? I think I brought him up and how ravens brought him food and all of that, right? And ministered to him and all of this, right? These these birds are ministering creatures, right? But they also have other um, illustrations, of, uh, illustrations or symbols of who they are, right? Particularly in this part of scripture, okay? So I ask God, so what is the significance of a raven in this, in, in this part of scripture, right? He said, yeah, yeah ravens are supposed to be a, a mess, messenger animals, right? This is a messenger bird that I'm sending out, right? For, for a particular purpose. But I want you to look at this particular thing, right? In this particular part of scripture. The raven never came back to the ship. The raven went out doing his own thing, right? You don't know where the raven is. The raven could have died. The raven could have just, it's probably till this day circling around, right? But in the book of Leviticus, right, I was digging deeper. Ravens were brought up on a list of unclean animals, right? And ravens also symbolized um, um, poor messengers, right? So ravens are not only unclean animals right but they're also poor messengers right and i said lord what is the significance of it he said before you hit dry ground right you have to divide up your ship you have to know who is the poor messenger and who's the good messenger right Who's going to bring good news back and who's going to bring good, um, bad news back, right? Or who's going to come back at all and do what you tell them to do? Ravens are also scavengers. They feed off of rotting flesh. Raven oftentimes do what they want to do. Now, you, as you can see in scripture, right, when God tells the raven to do something, the raven's going, right, right. Who, who's going to disobey God, right, when you're a, a creature, a thing, right? Noah asked this thing to, to, to come back to me, didn't, 
right? Now you can say for various reasons that the, the raven didn't come back, right? But symbolically, the raven is unclean, unclean animal according to the book of Leviticus, right? It's a bad messenger and it's a scavenger, okay? So he said, pay attention to those who are just going out to do their own thing. They're not coming back to the ship. They're doing things on their own terms. They don't come back. They're only going to bring your ship down, right? The dove went out, did what it was supposed to do. Matter of fact, it didn't find any dry ground. It came back. It wasn't wandering out there. It came back to the ship. It went on the second time. It came back with an olive leaf. Olive leaf or olive tree or olives symbolizes new beginnings, a new beginning. It symbolizes anointing. It came back with blessings. You have to know who are your ravens and who are your doves, right? And I'm not particularly talking about, you know, it could be people, it could be things, but I'm not, I'm not being like, judge. it could be anything, right? Any kind of raven in your structure, whatever that structure is, right? So we're still in the testing area, okay? Now, there's another thing that, that, that goes along with that, the whole testing area, right? I'm being mindful of time. Noah had to learn how to rest. You don't see anywhere in this book where it says that Noah was tossing and turning or he had some sort of discomfort or he was in any sort of doubt, or he was fearful of, <laughs> of, of being knocked overboard or, or the ship sinking. There is no dialogue that shows any complaining from Noah at all, right? And when the Lord brought this up in my mind, he also brought me to, in the passage of scripture where Jesus, Jesus was in a ship during a storm, Everybody was going frantically, right? They were they were frantic on the ship. But what was Jesus doing? What was he doing? Can someone tell me what he was doing? Sleeping. He was sleeping. sleeping. The audacity of him to be sleeping during a storm. <laughs> right? This is another key thing that we have to think about in our time of testing. We have to while we're being tested, learn how to rest. And, and rest is, 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 don't think of it as something where you're just stationary, right? You're resting while you're moving, right? But rest is also at its height, a, 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 it's a heart posture, okay? When we're resting in, in, in the spirit, what we're telling God, what we're communicating with him is that we fully trust him. We can close our eyes right? We can recline and we know that he has our best interest at heart. He is protecting us from the storm. It's not that he's keeping us from the storm, but he's protecting us while we're going through the storm, okay? All right, last part, process of blessings, okay? So um, I want to go to, yeah, yeah, go back to, let me see here. I want to go to, to um, chapter 8, verse 15, okay, of Genesis. Chapter 8, verse 15. And I'm just going to read and, 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 and stop at a point, right? I'm probably going to stop around 21, all right? But I'm, I'm going to skip through it. Then God said to Noah, come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the birds, the animals, and all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wife and his son's wives, 
all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth came out of the ark one kind after the other, after another. Now, let's look at verse 20, okay? Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of man. Even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood and never again, will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. 22, as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will, will never cease, right? So one of the things that came up, right? And in, 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 um, as I was preparing this message was, um, just a topic of gratitude, right? Gratitude is important, like when you're um, coming, when, when you're going through a testing season and when you're coming out of the testing season, right? What Noah did was very, very, very important, right? He not only signified worship, but he also signified gratitude, right? He built an altar to the Lord, thanking him for bringing him to his promised land. Sometimes we forget, right, after we come out of what we're coming out of, to really, really thank God for what he has done. Sometimes we may think we brought ourselves out of it, right? It was because of our skill. It was, it was because of our giftings. But really, truly, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be anywhere. We would probably be a sinking ship at the bottom of the ocean with no prospects of life, okay? So God preserved his life and he, and 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 Noah thanked him. He gave him gratitude, right? He built him an altar, altar. Um, chapter nine, and I'm gonna skip through a little bit here. Um, and this, this is where we get into like the blessings part, right? Chapter, chapter nine, I'm gonna read from verse one to to verse six then god blessed noah and his sons saying to them be fruitful and increase in number and fill the earth the fear and dread of you will fall upon the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air upon every creature that moves along the ground and upon all the fish of the sea they are given into your hands everything that lives and moves will be food for you and just as i gave you the green plants i now give you everything I now give you everything. Because Noah, he followed the instructions of God, right? Built this structure. He was able to um, go through the waiting season when the waters were being gathered, right? He was able to go through the testing season, right? Where these elements tested the integrity of what he built. He was able to divide up, right? To really strategically look at what he had, right? Using these birds, right? Yet by the time he got to dry ground, the Lord, he, he, he blessed him and his family. Now I want you to understand this, right? When God has given you a structure to build, the blessings afterwards are not specifically just for you. The blessings are for you and the generations after you. Think about this. Just think about this, right? Whether it's in business, whether it's your family. Every family has its own history, okay? Every family has its own history. But down the road, there was a decision that someone made that resulted in you being here. 
there is some story where God intervened somewhere, where God helped you to build, so he helped someone to build something, right? And now you are here on this accelerate call with the mind that you have. All of this was not an accident. Someone was instructed to build something one day that resulted in generations and generations and generations to come, and you're here. It could be business. It could be family. It could be other things, right? But this is the process of building. We follow the instructions. We build. We wait. We allow our structure to be tested, right? And we receive God's blessings. Um, I'm going to end it with this. <laughs> I know where we're cutting straight to 1115. But I ask God, right? What What's another like significance of like the enemy trying to um, pervert things and, and to mess things up, all this corruption, all this violence, right? What is it about us? that the enemy is so hell-bent on destroying, right? And he brought me to Psalm, Psalms 8. Is it Psalm 8 or Psalms 8? But Psalms 8. Psalm 8, Psalm 8. I get those. Can, um, can, can I have like a volunteer to read Psalm 8 and we'll end there? I'm tired of talk. I'm tired of listening to myself. <laughs> um, is it is it a particular version? Um, read any version you want. It is all going to say the same thing. I like <laughs> I like your versions better. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Uh, normally, I'm in. Well, I'm just. I'm gonna stay right here in NIV. Normally, I'm in the past. Okay. I'm gonna stay right where we're at. So. Okay. It says, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the seas. Seas, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Mm. <laughs> that is That brought chills. Yes. To me. That just brought chills. What is man that you are mindful of him? Mm -hmm. What is man that you're mindful of him? Everything in Psalm 8 wraps up everything. It encapsulates everything that we share today. All of this is because God is mindful of us. He knows that this structure is going to protect us from the storm. He knows that it's a transport unit to bring us from one season to the next because he is mindful of us. And he has put everything under our feet. When the angels look at that, right? They marvel. They're like, they're like, Lord, why them? <laughs> like these people that can't, that they don't know how to put on their pants. Right? <laughs> they don't know what time it is. Okay? They ask so many questions. Why are you so mindful of that? He loves us so much. He loves us so much. And looking back, it, 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 if Noah was just told to build something without instructions, that ship would have probably sank. But he loved us so much. He loved him so much that he gave him particular instructions. 
we're here. If nothing else, just thank God that you're here. Right? But that's it. I'll, I'll, I'll end with that. I thank God. I, I thank God for this word. I hope that it was something that stuck with you in your heart. Right? Um, there's a lot of things that I, I kind of like took out, but I stayed with the things that God really, really want me to share. Right? Um, so God bless you. That's all I got to say. Sheldon, my goodness. Okay, we need a part two. <laughs> I think y'all vote. You got to come back. And man, I got you. Man, I, when I tell you on point, the moment you said Noah, because that was, a, I mean, Natalie talked about the ark yesterday, but this was something that I had been already studying over the last couple of days um, wow. with some other stuff in Isaiah as well and putting all these pieces together I mean and this the way that you like I mean I how excellent is his name I mean how excellent is his name and how much he just yeah I I, I don't have any words I thank you thank you I'm gonna come back around to some stuff but I'm gonna let <laughs> everybody else who anybody else that wants to add anything or wants to contribute because I mean you 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 hit so much but uh go ahead Linda just really quick um I don't want to take there that's a lot but from yesterday and then what our homework was that just just said mm -hmm. and when you start out with Noah immediately I thought of the hammer from mm -hmm. yesterday I, I missed I missed I really the last missed um message by the way and oh. I apologize yeah. yeah. I'll catch up. Yeah, but your your the four process, the things of the building, the waiting, the testing. I'm writing everything down, and at the very end, I'm looking. I'm like generational blessings. Isn't that something? I just learned, and I I thought I knew Noah. Or I've I've heard the story since I was little, but I've I I yeah I I can't put it enough. It's I'm still kind of it's wrapped. Okay, I found out where generational blessings comes from. And who it's from Noah, but man, you just left me in such awe. And even from yesterday, but wow, yeah, I just wanted to say that. But generational blessings. Now I'll always think of Noah. So thank you, thank you so much. And that's the purpose of why we're here, why we spread His word, and why we share the crusade. God bless. Thank you so so much. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. Lakita, go ahead. Oh, wait a minute. You, you were unmuted for a second and then you're muted again. Let me see. You, you got, are you on your phone as well? Yeah. There we go. Nope. We don't hear you. I yeah, can't hear Lakita. Mm -mm. Can you hear me now? Now we got. Oh, you. yes, I can. Praise God. Woo. God, man, I'm telling you, I got knocked off, but yet could hear the whole word. But I'm not going to speak long, but man, Sheldon, the word you brought, and it is so matched up with what Natalie spoke. And thank you, Jacinta, for the 16th, because it was such a revelation, and I'm still unlayering a lot of instructions from God based off of the word yesterday. But as soon as you opened your mouth, you said God's instructions. And you said going back to the beginning, and that is what Natalie spoke about, us going back to the beginning. We've been talking about building. When you spoke about things, we are already in the land. Then you mentioned the word blueprints, and that was also mentioned in the word yesterday. And then it was talking about the ark and us picking up the hammer because there was times that we didn't pick up the hammer. And then for you... For God to really differentiate and break down things to allow us to understand what the raven is versus the dove, like who are we in this process, you know, and then you come with four key things. When I say everybody has been speaking, I can't say it enough. I cannot say it enough. I cannot keep my mouth shut every time I want to hold into responding. But when I say God has given us intentional instructions and if we do not listen you just broke it down if we don't listen how we have to go back 
to the very beginning because we will be exposed. So he's being very, very intentional. And so he wants us to remember that we must be in the process of building and waiting and testing and in blessing. Oh my goodness. So then when you were speaking, I was like, okay, he talked about in verse five, I gave you the green plant and then I gave you everything. And when you think about what the dove brought back, it, the Holy Spirit told me, go look up what the olive leaf looks like. An olive leaf, I went and looked it up, it's green. It's beautiful, it's green. But if you think about it, it's the depiction of God's crown that lays on his head, mm-hmm. made out of a, I mean, he was just showing me Anointing. so much. Mm-hmm. Showing me so much and he thought enough of us. I'm serious. I mean, I cannot thank you enough, Jacinta, for your obedience. And God pulling my spirit to this space, because, I mean, it is amazing how he has always been here. But when he exposes who he is to us, when we really open up our hearts, and really seek his faith and really dig deep down into what he wants us to hear, to listen, and to ask, and to just go through the process of understanding what you are in the spirit. It is so amazing. It is so amazing. So I thank you, my brother, for your word. Thank you, each and every one who brings a word to this call, because this call, I cannot say it more than enough. It has saved my life. God came down and picked me up on a call like this. I have sat in pews. I have learned from my ancestors, my family, but God chose, he chose us to give us the clear instruction to move. So I praise God. I'm sorry, but woo, praise God for this word and our group and for those who are listening. All right, I'm going to try to go off mute so I won't mess up somebody else responding. <laughs> Amen. 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 Yes. Go ahead, Don. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Amen. And, you know, I, I just wanted this this go off what Lakita, you know, the, or, or the Psalms 8 that was read. Um, my God. I mean, when when we sit down and just just reflect and, and Sheldon, you, you, you know, you, sh- you said it. You know, just think of the work that God had for Noah to do. And it's the same for God has chosen us. And there's a, there's a great work to be done. And all, all that's required of us is just to be obedient to it. And, and so God, God is bringing all these things to our attention. Um, you know, uh, again, I'm, I'm just enjoying uh, hearing the word of God from other people and of those stories that I that that I'm I'm familiar with, and God is just blowing my mind and saying, "You thought you knew it this way, isn't that right, Don? I know, I know, I know, I know. But watch this, watch this, and we see so we. we I mean, the word we can never we can never exhaust the word of God." And the whole time, Sheldon, that you were talking, I was thinking of, I was thinking about what God wants us to build right here within, you know, the company that we are representing. He, he wants us to build that his way. I've heard Jacinta say that many, many, all of us, many, many, many of time. This is the way I want you to build it. And we have to be, and man, um, oh my God. <laughs> um, uh Genesis 6 and 22. Thank you for putting emphasis on that. Thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Glory to God. And but even more so to point out the fact that there is no recording in the word of God where we see knowing saying, well, Lord, how am I going to, Lord, uh, and I have a I have a movie called um, uh, Evan Almighty, mm-hmm. and you know I'm, 
I like looking at movies. But anyway, and it, it's the you know he he's depicting his no and he's building the ark and this is this is a big sucker, man. I'm telling you. And and so I'm thinking of okay, at, just watching that movie, thinking, you know, how is Noah going to get all this material up on and putting it in place and the materials and all? You, you, man, this was a tremendous work, but all Noah needed. Noah didn't even say, uh, Lord, you know, I didn't go to school for, you know, construction and uh, no. All Noah needed to do was say, okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I know for me, I I, I don't always say yes. I always say, um, mm, how they, and you know, you talk about the, te the ravens and the doves, you know, I, <laughs> I, okay, I'll leave that one alone. But you know, in, in our business, we we got some ravens and doves. I mean, you know. But to God be the glory, Sheldon, man, it's great to hear your voice again, man. And I'm so glad that you shared this. And th this was absolutely amazing. And like everybody's pointed out of what what the Lord shared or gave up on yesterday from uh, Natalie's mouth, as far as you know, I've asked you to build an ark. But you haven't picked up the hammer. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. That's all I have to say about that, at least for right now. Amen. I'm, I'm going to go back and review that. I was about to say, minute. Sheldon, you need to go back. It's only yeah. about seven minutes. It's, yeah. it, the whole thing isn't but a couple minutes, but you got to go listen to it because God brought you in in exactly, I mean, the exact order. You see what he does? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Did, did, didn't I say? And, and, you know, it just, to me, it's also just the indicator of when, when a person hears you listen to the Holy Spirit and you're obedient to that, you know, because it's so easy to try to go off script and kind of do what you want to do, but it, it really is a true testament to you and the, and being led by the Holy Spirit as well, you know, um, to follow and hear his instructions so clearly and to release it so clearly, <laughs> you know, is, is, um, it's important. It's big deal. That's a big deal. Um, go ahead, Alice. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, praise the Lord, Shelton. I tell you, you and 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 Crystal can can paint a story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you the story. It, you know, you you got to be Ray Charles to miss this one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a couple of things that you said just really, really, uh, really stuck out at me is that when Noah received his instructions, there was no questioning that we see. There was no back talk. You know, um, he accepted God's word, accepted what God said, you know. And when God gave him instructions, he said, he told him, what type of wood to use, gopher wood. There had to have been a reason for the gopher wood because we have so many different types of woods out there. But God knew exactly what type of wood he needed for the type of construction that he wanted to, to have built. And the other part was that he told them to use pitch, pitch within and pitch without. That was to seal up the holes mm -hmm. to make sure that there was no leakage. And, and and so the note that I wrote to myself was, uh, leaking boats don't float. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and to know that, you know, we have holes and things in our lives that God wants to use his spirit to, to, to close up those holes so that our boat will continue to float in the direction that it's supposed to flow in. Quite often we get off track and we try and take shortcuts. And we know with Noah, there were no shortcuts. Okay, there are no shortcuts in the kingdom. There, you know, we, we can float through life and we can, you know, we can take a shortcut here and a shortcut there, you know. But we, you know, but like in construction, when, when you find that they have taken struct, uh, uh, shortcuts, the structures fall. Mm -hmm. So when the structures fall, there are usually human lives involved or human lives that are destroyed because of faulty destruction. Mm -hmm. And so I had to ask myself how many uh, 
uh, have, have I followed the instructions and, and have I given faulty or taken shortcuts that was at the detriment of someone else? Mm -hmm. Definitely not on purpose, but it could have been by either omission or commission. So I, you know, so those are things that just just having to make me look inside myself. But the instructions God gave were precise. They were very detailed as to everything that He did. And the, the, the key thing that really hit me was that He said, you know, when we in, in reading the scriptures, um, He said He He said bring in one of each kind, two of each kind, but they were opposites. Mm -hmm. Because they were to reproduce from each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you got male animal, female animal. Then you had four, four men and four women. All purpose was to procreate mm -hmm. and to rebuild, uh, uh, re replenish the earth. You know, so 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 God has a a strategy and a purpose for everything He does. You know. And, 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 you know, and, and I had never read the part about or really seen the part about the waters were already coming in when they went into the boat. I always thought like everybody else, you know, they went into the boat and then they closed it. But can you imagine those that were standing on the outside trying to get in and mm -hmm. could not get in because they failed to heed God's mm -hmm. word, you know? And so we often, so, you know, and, and we, we, we fail to listen, you know, we fail to follow instructions, but God said, here are my instructions, heed them, listen to them, follow them. Mm -hmm. And at the end of those, and, 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 and at the end of that, you know, he says the building, the waiting, the testing, and the blessing. Mm -hmm. When we follow that prescription, there's no way that we will fail. You no, know, there's no way that your boat's going to sink. Okay, because mm -hmm. you shored up all the holes and you've done everything precisely as the Lord said it would be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Go ahead, Miss Myra. You're on mute, honey. Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is just such a great message, my brother Sheldon. Um I missed on yesterday because we've been doing a lot of things, but I'm definitely just as soon as we get off this call, I'm going back to listen to my sister, Natalie. But I'd just like to say, I just thank God, you know, for the whole message. And just like everyone has said, so much clarity, instructions, don't have to guess about what God wants me to do. He made it clear. I just got to go back and pray and do what he said, do. But I thank God I was thinking about the part where you said, you know, so many times I know I said, I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. But God said through you today, get get to doing what I've already told you and then the waiting to come. I'm going to finish the rest, you know, so our ah, Lord, I'm shining. Thank you, God. I just see the waiting as a, a way to procrastinate and not do what God said to do. So what I heard today, get busy, child, and I'll do the rest. So I'm so grateful, but most of all, um, church, I'm just so grateful how God is bringing everything together that he's given our leader, uh, Jacinta, you know, how he let him shine and how she hears the voice of God and she waits on, on the Lord. And then it's amazing how he gives her who to do what at what time and God you know, feast. It's just amazing to me, church, that God has us all here for such a time as this, all different races and, you know, just, just, just God's way of doing things, you know, but it was beautiful. My brother, um, I'm, I'm definitely going to sit down here and go back and listen to, um, all the instructions, because what I've been saying to the Lord is that I'm going back, God, you've given us principles, you've given us policies, you've given us instruction. He's done all this through our, our sister Jacinta, praise God, and through others. So my, my thing that God has given me to do is sit down, go back through the recordings and mm -hmm. get these instructions, these principles, these policies, get them in order in a way that he's already spoken to me because he's spoken to all of us what to do. 
-hmm. But now he's given us clarity and he's given us more revelation on how to get it done. So I just appreciate everybody on here. I love you all and you all continue to be blessed and have a blessed day. Amen. 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 Y'all listen, there's so much and I know we're running over, but bear with me if you've got time. Um, and I and I, I believe I, we're going to come back to all this because he touched on so much that you know, God has already been set, been, been talking to me about, but, um, I think one of the things to reiterate is again, when he talked about Noah, Noah was a, dis, was from, came from Enoch. Now remember the Bible says that Enoch, so Enoch was like his great, great, great grandfather. I think somewhere in there, he was a couple back. He, he, I think maybe two people, something, something like that. So, and I don't know age-wise how they all connected, whether Noah actually saw Enoch walk with God, because it said this was part of his lineage. He was about four back. Four back. Yeah. You know, I, because they lived so long, I don't know if I, I, I hadn't done the math to see if he was around, you know, but the fact was that this was part of his lineage. And I think one of the things that God has really been, um, what he's been pushing us on, if you notice that there's a theme about following his instruction, and it's so easy to think that you're doing that because I spend time in his word or I spend time in prayer and you want to say, hey, I'm doing that. But the fact that he keeps pushing on it lets us know that there is deeper to go. One of the things he said to me was, I'm the first and the last. Is he your first? Is he your first? Is he the one, because, I, and I'm going to give y'all something in a few weeks. It's, it's, it's really, as I, he had me go through Isaiah and, um, and, and pull out some things. They're really a blueprint. And, you know, but to say he's your first, to say, is he really your teacher? Is he really, or are we hearing from other sources first? And then we kind of filter that down through, Lord, what do you think? You know, and I and I and, and we don't press on the full set of instructions like, you, you you know, you talked about how Noah and I've, I've said this before. God will give you specifics, specifics. He's we we think he's vague and we settle for vague and we fill in the blanks. And, and that's been okay up until now. But one of the things, the pattern that I see and what he's bringing us back to understanding, just like he talked about with Noah, is that in that day, there was so much corruption going on that God said, I'm going to wipe it clean. And see, what, what does that say to us in business? That says, well, if there's a day that he decides to wipe the slate clean, which I have to say, these are it, it falls in line with dreams that he's given me years ago then what he's saying to you is you need to put yourself before me so that I can give you the blueprint that will insulate you when the time comes that things are wiped the other the other way is wiped away and Natalie said this yesterday about how the things that man has made they're going to be correct they're, they're, they're going to be eliminated and there's a word that he says in Isaiah, um, in, in Isaiah 48, that just, it, it, it struck me. It struck me because it, it's Isaiah 48 and it's somewhere in verse six through, through 13. I'm just paraphrasing right now, but I, like I said, I'll bring it back later. But he says that there are things never seen before. It, there's actually this whole formula here, but it says that there are things that have never been seen before. He says that um, I am going to release, things will come into being that no one has ever seen. And he says, your ears have been shut to it up until now. So there's no higher up, there's no celebrity, no superstar that has this strategy. He says, it's been locked up until now. And it is, and, and, and the Amplified version says, it's gonna be, it's called force because it's called forth because of the word that's been prophesied. And this is the only place I ever see God say, hey, this has never been manifested. You know, he talks about being, he created everything ahead of time. But he's saying this right here, I'm creating right in this moment. 
right in this moment because of the prophesied word, something new is about to come forth. Nobody's ever seen it. And so the advice that we might take from somebody else that we think is wise, and this is why he's cautioning us because he's saying there, there are things I'm ready to release. Nobody, not even your wisest people have even thought or seen this. So be mindful that I'm your teacher because all these other things will, they're going to be brought to naught. So be careful of who we think is wise. You know, Natalie, again, address that. Be careful of the instruction we take because of all the success they've had. Because he says there's something no one has seen. And now we need to know what does that, he, we sit before him because he is the teacher to say, what does this look like here in my business? And the last thing I'm going to, I'm going to say about that is that if you notice when, when God told Noah to build the ark, he said, build yourself an ark. He didn't say build me one, build yourself. And so to me, that speaks to the structure is not only about what he wants, but he's like, this is what you're building for your family. And does, is that not our business? Build yourself an ark. Wow. Wow. So, man, <laughs> I, man. I'm, I'm overflowing. I'm full man. of <laughs> Go ahead. Man. <laughs> I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, mm -hmm. I, 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 feel, I feel what you're feeling right now. I, I mean, I'm, I'm so. Yes. Yes, Lord. So push yourself. If you feel like you have not gotten your full blueprint, you don't have down to the details, then you need to push yourself. I'll tell your, you need to come before him and ask for the instruction and make sure. And I don't care how long it takes. That's the question. Don't care how long, how long does it take for him to give it to you? You walk away after 10 minutes because you feel like he hadn't said nothing. Look, that Noah gave us a blueprint of a person who walked with God. And, and this is the other thing about it all. The Holy Spirit wasn't on the earth at this time. The Holy Spirit empowers us to be able to be this person. But you got Noah being something that the Holy Spirit is we need to empower us to be. So what is it? What do I'm saying about that? I'm saying that you have the ability to be the Noah who can follow every instruction, who can hear every word, who can hear down to the detail and, and that be your normal way of life. God is pushing us to be that. And not to keep settling because we have settled for the smaller picture and we've settled for the, oh, I just didn't feel like it today. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Lord, thank you for your grace. Oh, I just, I don't think, I don't know how to hear. I can't make my mind stop. I can't do, that's, that's old. He is pushing right now that you would press and, and be that, be Noah, <laughs> Be you can because you can be. I want to say, I don't want to use the word flawless, but I want to say flawless because that is what the Holy Spirit now empowers us to do. Grace gave us that, Noah did it by himself, <laughs> right? So, push, do not settle. Because remember, otherwise, when we do that, when we settle for this half and half, or it, in, in terms of what Noah saw, this contamination of God's creation. When we settle for this half-heartedness, the not pure of heart, we risk, like Sheldon just said, our structure, when tested, will fall with everybody else's. So I, I yeah, I, I got, we, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> we <laughs> babble babble <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know right man so thank you again 